Let's see if I can get some decent illumination on this. Unfortunately, the illumination is not at a great angle, but we can see. Okay, so there he is. So the first thing to do is to get the wire out. That was a very Canadian out. Mm -hmm. um, and you can probably best just grab it from the back here and give him a little tug. And there he goes. He's completely defreaded now. Actually, do you have a phone? Yep. We can also make a little live video of the procedure, let's say. It's going to be a bit foggy in the plastic, but... Yep. Okay. So the first thing I did is I went from the back and from up here pulled out the wire and tugged it out. And now we have the completely loose wire. So what you want to make the thread is to make sure you have a nice straight piece. So actually, it's not a bad technique. I have some nice super sharp scissors I bought at HEMA. But if you give it a bit of a pull between your gloved fingers, you can usually get it to also break. And now, one technique for threading is to grab them with your tweezers and just try to get them through the hole. But the problem right now is also that, so in principle, the, the gap between the, the clamps should feed them straight into the hole. So it's just a matter of going like this a bunch of times. I don't know if you can see it on the video. In principle, it's just a bunch of doing this a bunch of times until he gets in. But first of all, that's kind of hard. It takes a bit of experience and practice. And second of all, right now, the clamps are not even aligned with the hole. So even if we did manage to get it through the clamps, it's going to smash in. It's not going to be feeding it into the hole. So in that situation, what we're going to do is the alternative threading approach, which is the following. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the tool by 90 degrees. And by turning the tool by 90 degrees, we'll expose the hole on the side. And that will allow us to much more easily have access to the hole. And so what I've done is I've positioned this, because what's going to happen is I'm going to turn this screw, and the tool is going to come loose. But when I do that, he will fall. So if the tool, if you don't put something to catch the tool on, it will just fall down and smash onto the thing. So now you can see he's dropped, but now he's being held against the tool. In fact, I can even move him up a little bit if I want. It's a good way to precisely position it. But what we're going to do is now that he's loose, we're going to grab him and rotate him by 90 degrees. is a little bit awkward actually. I need to use the flatter tweezers. Yeah, that doesn't look not good. Maybe I need to open this. I think I need to open the screw a bit more. I need to get the screw really all the way out so that I don't freely turn. And now we should be able to grab them and give them a little nudge around. I should do this with flat pair of tweezers. These tweezers are going to be completely destroyed. Okay. So now he's at 90 degrees. What we can do is we can clamp him back in at 90 degrees. And we'll lower the table and he won't fall. And now, if you, well, you can't see it in the camera on the microscope here, but it of course, if you look from the side, you can then see the hole. And now we grab the wire, and I'll probably do this with the microscope. So the wire's blowing around in the wind in the clean room, but that's all right. We grab the wire, and we want to feed them in over here. Like I'll probably do it with looking in my eye. Okay, I'll grab them a bit closer to give myself a bit more, a bit more force and precision. Okay, he's in. Yeah, he's on the camera. And you see that 
The tricky bit is he doesn't want to pull himself back out, so you can't, you've got to make sure he doesn't do that. So you can grab him with your tweezers on the other side and give him a bit of a tug. But now the wire's caught a bit on the screw over here, but that's all right. So now he's threaded. And now the trick is that we now want to, well, he's threaded, turn him back around. Um, so let's bring this back under. And we're going to raise this up because otherwise, as soon as I let the screw loose, he's just going to go boom. So that's probably good. Maybe I'll put him a bit higher. And then, actually, I'll try and get into a clean part of this plastic. There's probably a better way to do this somehow, but whatever. We should probably get a, a part which is sort of the right height to do this kind of activity. So now this, this thing is unclamped. And I should be able to, if you have a, a wider fit pair of tweezers, probably a bit better. And we can grab them over here. And while he's threaded, spin him back around. Place him forwards. You don't have to get him exactly the right angle because the screw will, once it's about the right way, the screw will push him up. And actually, using the table, you can adjust the height. If you look up here, top, you can see how far the tool is sticking at the top. And of course, exactly where you choose to clamp him will change the propagation of the pressure into the tool, or the ultrasonic waves into the tool, and the actuation of the tool measurements, but that's why you always calibrate every single time anyway, before you bond, because there's no such thing as magic machine parameters, that is a myth and legend. Okay, so now he's in, we can lower the table back down. Move this out of the way. And if we look through here, he should now be threaded. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy, maybe with a pair of tweezers, and give him a little tug. And as I do so, I will eventually want to make sure that the wire at the back goes between the, the wet, the uh, clamps. There we go. Now he's threaded. Uh, might come up from behind. Uh, What's that? Might have come out from behind in the groove of the clamp. Like when you moved away, it just from. Uh, no, you could have pulling it down. Yeah. No, it looks good. I can see it from the side. Okay. And then what I would do is I would grab the tweezers or the nice sharp pair of sewing scissors from Hema that I bought on my personal money and have donated to the clean room. <laughs> and I will cut off the wire. And now, if we look, you can now see the wire in the microscope here with a nice tail. Yeah, it's pretty good. And now let's, uh, I think, put my glasses on the outside of my cleaner and suit. Uh, I can go feed and it should feed. Yeah, yeah. now he's feeding. Okay, so we're back into a normal-ish state. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Now what I will suggest first Do you have a reference uh, device, or will I do it on the bit of the PCB? Uh, just on the PCB. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, okay. Let's lower them down all the way. It's such a oh, all the copies in the hat shit. 
going off when I do my glasses. Okay, so I think we're getting good. So I'm now at bong height one of two. So I'm going to lower this down until we're about the right height. I'm going to lift up the table, of course, not lower the tool. Um, okay, so the first thing, once we've fed it, once we've re-threaded it, the first thing you should do is bond off, quote unquote. Um, and now the question of the day is, question of the day is, of course, how are our bond parameters? <laughs> yeah, but I want to bond off, and there's a there's a menu tool for that, menu item for that. I think it was zero again. I think that I can do like this. Or oh, what is the, what's the, there's a bond off, uh, okay, this is bond off, isn't it? Uh, I think so. Let's see, I'm going to inch down. Oh. Go back to home. There should be a, a menu item for bonding off to break off the end of the tail. Six. Yeah, it's six. Six. Okay, there we go. And then oh, yeah. we need to zero slash. Two. Yeah, zero. We're going to just do a big long zero. Oop. What the hell? No, okay. Oh, now it's the piece of yeah. lifted off. Or it's safe. Yeah. The problem, okay. So first, our PCB is kind of loosey-goosey. 